So I attempted to do this without PowerPoints, failed nearly one, it turns out, just because you know, I kind of like what I've done in this diagram. So those of you who see me talk have seen me talk about this diagram a few times. So this, I guess, is kind of this diagram, this life cycle of drilling, has probably underpinned my last six years of my career in worrying about the fact that our industry is challenged by the time or the length of time in which it takes to move around that cycle. And it doesn't matter whether you're worrying about uh, blast hole drilling or Greenfields diamond drilling, those time scales are different, but the time in which it takes us to currently to move around that cycle is just way too long. And I guess it was really understanding what we needed to do to address those problems that underpinned a lot of what happened in the DET CRC in terms of technology innovations required to <laughs> allow us to do this quickly. Uh, but then also, I guess, caused me to move out of what was then I was in, in a government research organisation with CSIRO and then I moved sideways into a, a technology, mining technology company. I guess that was tasked with trying to deliver some of the products that will enable us to move around this cycle quickly. Um, Ken came up with the, the name Truth Machine. So, so Ken was the one that kind of chucked this out at me the other day and I was on a plane, got the email. Um, so you know, Ken's take was the drill hole is the truth machine. It's, it's the one bit of truth we know about. Um, a geophysicist would say that, I guess. Um, and really what we're saying is, what does the world look like when we have Truth Machine 2.0? So that is that we are now going to start moving around this cycle, have the ability to move around this cycle in near real time. So our technology is going to be generating data sets on our drill rigs or close to our drill rigs in near real time. Um, that could be 24 hours, but that's fine. And that's going to allow us to uh, make decisions around our targeting or make decisions uh, from information products. And so I guess the thought exercise we've been going through is what does that mean for our world moving forward because it's actually it's not just about delivering the technologies that's, that's actually my role in the company I work for my product manager my role is to deliver a technology that is a successful product it's a successful product if it delivers value to the end user that's using it um, but but it's also there's a lot of sort of consequential or, um, aspects to this and so there was a few things we went through this this article is coming out in April SEG newsletter um, kind of touches on this. I wanted to touch on those with you here. So um, what does it mean if we can move around that drilling cycle in a matter of you know, 24 hours, 72 hours, if we can make a decision about drill hole number two at the time we're drilling drill hole number one, what does that mean for our business processes inside our company? Are your business processes in those companies set up right now to allow you to make a decision in 24 hours? So I think it was Munro in that article, and the, and the highlighting in Munro's article came from Dave Lowey. Um, it's amazing how these things go around. But uh, uh, I think one of the quotes in there was, uh, he had yet to see uh, he had yet to see SAP run an optimised processing plant. So SAP is one of these business processes we're all encumbered with. Uh, and an absolutely fantastic quote, it really was. Um, so, so our business processes alone are not driven to kind of dealing with this kind of real-time or near real-time decision-making process. Uh, but also, one of the things I've been really thinking about is the nature of our companies as well. So I'm working now in a mining technology company that has very much embraced uh, the philosophies around lean management, uh, agile startup, uh, sort of dynamic product development. This is something that came down to the new tech startup world, something that's dri driven out of places like Silicon Valley. Um, and there are lean manufacturing philosophies out there, and there's lean, lean six, or six Sigma or whatever, is, is some of the evolutions of that. Um, we could actually think about ourselves in that context. So if we're going to make decisions quickly, we actually need to be a lot more agile about how we manage our projects. And we need to be thinking about how we encompass that in our business processes, because at the moment, they're, they're not there to do that. It actually requires a change in philosophy or a change in communication upwards in our companies as well. Our, our senior managers, our investors, need to understand that we're a managed failure business, but they need to see the opportunity in being a managed failure business, not, not the, the downside. So there's a lot of business process 
issues that we need to deal with and address. If we get this right, the other thing that happens is that we need to address our regulatory frameworks. And so people talk about the length of time for permitting, for instance, right? Now, I'm, now I've got the ability to make a decision about where drill hole number two is going, uh, but it's going to take me six months to get a permit. Well, we, we can't do that. Now, the upside to all of this is if we get this right, then the footprint of the process of exploration drilling will be a lot lower. We will be able to make decisions on, I think, some of the we were talking about this earlier, we will make decisions, we will generate data that will allow us to make decisions about even things like the environmental impact of our mining operation very early on in the piece. That should, if we get the messaging right, give us a much better social license to operate. So if we can get the messaging right, if we embrace this, this process, we get the social license to operate, then actually we should be in a position where we can actually start to make decisions quickly. Uh, and, and everyone wins. Uh, Shareholder value, or the very nature of our business. Um, what does it mean if I can take my fixed budget, make really quick decisions, and take that fixed budget and test a lot more of my targets across multiple projects maybe, uh, because I've actually made the decision on drill hole number one to walk away from target number one. Instead of taking that fixed budget and expending it all in that same project or tenement, uh, because I haven't got any results back in the time until we can drill the project. What that means is you're actually, you actually you do have a, a tangible impact on the uh, return on investment that those investors see. And that's a message we need to be, be sharing. What it also means is the life cycles of our companies, that moment from, I think, feast to famine was a, a, a term that Ken used, uh, that, that, moment, that, that time frame from feast to famine will also be shorter. And we need to, we need to understand what that means for our community as well. So someone stood up in a, in a forum where Dave Lowry was talking about real-time decision making. Someone stood up as a junior explorer and they said, we rely on the six-month turnaround from the labs to keep us going. Well, that's the bloody problem with our industry right there. The waste there and that, that lack of uh, efficiency gained back to the shareholders of that activity is, is outrageous, actually. So that's what needs to change. Um, so lastly, the people and skills. This is a really interesting one. So when I talk about the technologies here, and we talk about things like information products and analytics, uh, people ask me, are we getting rid of the geologist? Actually, no. What we're trying to do with the products and technologies we're bringing into this drilling cycle is we're trying to take away some of those things that, that Dave, I think you talked about, will take away some of the daily grind processes of our people and allow them to be geoscientists. Give them the support. So they're not DBAs anymore. They're not, they're not managing all of those processes because we've got systems in place to do that for them. We're just going to give them the information products to allow them to make decisions as geoscientists. That's really important. But what it does mean is our people coming out of universities are going to need to be more numerate than they maybe have been in the past. They're going to have to have the fundamental geological skills. All of that stuff is going to have to be there, but they're going to have to be a little bit more numerate because they're going to be working with systems now that are going to be uh, doing more numerate operations on that, on that data. So the, the age-old thing of winding up doing geology because you weren't quite good enough to do physics or you were in the pub too many times to actually do chemistry, pure chemistry, uh, we are actually going to have to have our people kind of understanding some of this stuff. So I think, I think it's all good. I think this stuff actually encourages uh, our people to, to be uh, proper geoscientists again. And the other thing I'm just going to chuck out there really quickly as well is, so my role in the company as a product manager, something I've been thinking about in the last three days, uh, my role in my company is as a product manager. A product manager is someone that has no direct line reports, but they are required to influence a cross-functional team to deliver a commercially successful product. Uh, so one of the things I've been going around in my head actually is who are the product managers, this is my question, who are the product managers in our uh, exploration companies or mining companies? Let's say mining companies. Who are the product managers? Your product is commercially successful quality or that's the product. So who are the product managers? So I just want to leave that one out there. Thank you. Thank you.